Hi there, and welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory, and it's time to, I don't know, draw with me, perhaps, if you're so inclined. So, today I am endeavoring to be organized. I want to talk a bit about organization, but first I want to say hi to Myrna in Vancouver, and Danielle in Montreal. Janice in Colorado, and Joanna. Hello, all of you, and many others, I hope, will be drawing with me today. So, um, first of all, I wanted to make sure that you got the reference material that we are going to be using. If you hold on a second, put it somewhere else, and I need to just grab it for sharing with you. Hold on a second, I'm just going to switch screens for one nanosecond. So, did you like my little running pug? That's my new little piece of animation I just made. Um, and here you see down here it says download reference picks from bit.ly slash w dwm716. If you go to that, it's a URL. If you go there, you'll be able to download the reference pictures that we'll be using today um, in a few minutes when we start drawing. Um, this is my attempt at being a bit more uh, organized and thinking things through in advance because we've been doing drawing with me for, I don't know, a couple years now, and there's always a certain kind of hair on fire aspect to it, at least from my end. I often feel like, God, I, I forgot to do this. And, and today, in my attempt to be a bit more organized, I, uh, I did create this, this thing that you can download. And I also... Unfortunately, wasn't organized enough to easily access the URL, but there you have it. So, um, if you want to download that, I'll also be putting the little pictures on the screen that we'll be drawing from. But the idea today is we're going to draw portraits of dogs. And I've selected a number of candidates for us to draw. And I thought we would spend, I don't know, I'm sending you, I think, six different dogs. And we, um, I'm not sure how many of them we'll draw. We'll see. We'll see how time goes. Um, I, my original thought was that we would spend five minutes per dog. Let's see how we feel about that. So we'll spend five minutes on the first one. And if that feels the right amount, then we'll continue doing it that way. Um, but it is, Thistle, of course, is uh, pointing out that it's a PDF instead of a JPEG. It's true. It is a PDF instead of a JPEG. I had to make that choice. So anyway, so I hope that that's helpful. So um, yes, if you want, like Lisa, to not draw dogs, but to draw teacups and toast, very against something, I'm not sure against what, against dogs. Teacups and toast against dogs. Anyway, if you want to draw something else, please do. It doesn't really matter, draw whatever you like. Um, but let's hang out and draw. Um, Let's get to it. The idea basically is to draw a series of squares. And I, and I, in it, while I was sitting around waiting for you, because honestly, I've been sitting here for ages waiting for you to show up. Um, while I was waiting, I started without you. Here is the first candidate. There is a little drawing that I did of him. This little guy. He's, I think he's a long-haired chihuahua, which is a nice dog. In fact, speaking of chihuahuas, my son Jack is visiting us right now, and he is accompanied by Penny, his short-haired chihuahua-ish dog, who we've drawn before. We've enjoyed drawing Penny. She's a great model. But this is a long-haired guy, and uh, so I just drew him. Um, Ina, don't worry about it. We just we haven't done anything yet. We've just I just I did this in advance. This is and here let me to share with you one that I prepared earlier, as Julia Child used to say. So here we is. I don't think it is a Pomeranian. I'm pretty sure it's a 
Chihuahua. Maybe it's a Chihuahua Pomeranian mix. Chihuahuaranian. That's what probably it is. It does look like a Furby. And it looks a bit like an Ewok as well. So anyway, so here's the plan. Get yourself an implement of some kind. And let's draw a square next to this guy. Um, oh, you know what I did? Uh, let me just put, pull up this, our next model. But actually, I, I, there was one minor thing I wanted to do with this guy. I wanted to put his name down underneath his portrait. So his name is Brad. So that. Just to keep track of who's who in our little portrait gallery. All right. Let's go to the next guy, the next model. Hi, uh, Brad. Hi, Terry. Who's Terry? I think that's a great face, don't you think? Dog impressions. Not very good. Um, okay, so. <laughs> Let's draw Terry. And um, let's see how feel about him. It's one thing that's helpful about having a square, theoretically, is you can look at the negative space. So you know the, I like to start by kind of more or less drawing the outline the entire critter, and looking at the negative space is helpful in that. Let's try and go here. And it's kind of backlit. We'll deal with that in a little bit. You can see a little bit of this hatch here. Dog. But you know, it's interesting when you look at a dog like this, or any dog, or anything you want. It's just a bit about how are we going to be able to capture the personality? We're not just drawing him like an object, you know, like a you know, slice of cheddar. He is a creature with a personality, a lot of personality in this case. And so we want to try and capture that. So uh, a lot of the personality is going to come, of course, from his eyes. And drawing, by the way, with a Pentel brush pen. I just got a new one um, in my rapacious hunger for draining Amazon of all art supplies. I did get this fresh brush pen. And very fresh, because those of you who have ever used a Pentel brush pen, they um, are great things to draw with, but they are brushes, and brushes do have, you know, he seems to make his eyes quite far enough apart. It's a little, it's a little, I don't know, this, this, his expression is going to be different. It's going to be different. I'm going to have to reinterpret him. Sorry, Terry. Um, yeah, so that's a big jelly bean nose. Nostrils. My dog Tim, some of you may remember Tim, he used to call him, his nickname was, one of his many nicknames was Mr. Nostrils. Because he, uh, he had them and they were prominent. Decided to do with his teeth. Teeth are always tricky because you can easily make, particularly people, look completely idiotic if you if you kind of draw the spaces between their teeth too strongly, which is going to be a little bit of a problem with Terry. Yeah, 
something dislocated jaw, but then it'll happen, you know, it'll happen to a dog. The main thing I want to capture with him is, is kind of slightly dopey expression. That's the main thing about him, is that expression. I've changed it a bit, it's even dopey, I'm afraid, but, um, that's okay. I'm going to leave that up there as a reminder for those who arrive later. Um, Daniel, yes, you can watch it later. You have to go somewhere. There's something more important to take care of right now. It will be on YouTube for the rest of time. It's that, that important of an historical document. Now, this Terry is sort of cream colored, and I'm going to be delving into another one of my more recent purchases, which is this, my enormous set of Derwent Inktense pencils. Inktense pencils are very, very nice, and a relatively recent discovery of mine. I didn't discover them. I mean, I discovered them. Yeah. It's not like I, like this, like America the Spucci kind of discovery, but I've only been introduced to them then. That's more relatively recently, and boy, I like them a lot. And I'm going to show you why in a minute. So, you know, on the initial encounter, they seem to be fairly normal colored pencils. Nicely colored, lots of good color range, but ultimately they're colored pencils. What's to get so excited about? Well, they do have this main ink tense. which might make you think that they will, that they're actually ink, which, which they may be, I'm not sure, they might be. Uh, but they are ink, they, they are, have certain ink-like qualities that go beyond just being a pencil. And um, they can be turned on, let me show you how now. So, I'm going to take this, which is a water brush, loaded with plain, ordinary water, straight from the toilet, and I'm going to go over my ink tents. Can you see what's happening? Let me zoom in. Let me show you more closely. See that? What's happening, essentially, it's a bit too close. Is it's becoming a sort of watercolor kind of thing. It's also becoming much more ink tense. The color is brightening and getting uh, more so. And, um, that is a pretty cool feature of this thing. So it allows you to, so it's kind of like watercolor and you have this bright color. And actually, I think it's even brighter than a lot of watercolors are. But you have the control that you get from a sharpened pencil, which is very, very useful and satisfying. And you can kind of layer it, and then you can let it dry. Like, for instance, with Brad here, Brad is seeing a lot of Brad. I have gone over with a brush like that. And then you can go on top of it, and you can add a bit more. So you could even have the pencil be a bit wet. See, and then you get a different effect, which isn't really quite right for Terry, but pretty cool nonetheless. All right, so there's Terry. Raynell says you can draw on fabric with the ink tense pencils and activate them with textile media. Well, maybe you can. I draw on? Like bed sheets? Bed sheets. Don't tell my wife. Actually, she's watching, so I might get in trouble if I did that. Um, thistle. Thistle seems to have a lot of answers for us today. And this one replies to caked ink. It also comes in cakes in a little travel cake. True. In fact, when, we, when we're talking cakes, it's cake time. 
these are ink tents. I don't like to call them cakes. I like a cake, but these are sticks. So this is that very same thing. In fact, here's that same color that we just used with Terry and watch. Let me give it, give it a little bit of action there. So, so here it is. It's almost, it's kind of like, seems like a pastel stick, but it's not. It's definitely not a pastel stick. You see how we're, um, zoom in again. You see how when I'm touching it into the part that's wet, it is activating immediately. So here, so this, what's great about this thing is you can take it and cover a big area really easily, you know, much better than a pencil because it's it's a big stick. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I'm, as I said, a, a new, newly converted fan of these ink tense things. I mean, in some ways, they will do a, a lot of the job of a watercolor for me in my sketchbook. Let's see if I have a Intense. Intense actually combined with magic marker. Intense. Intense. You know, I like a good pun as much as the next copywriter. So yeah, all right. So let's just uh, identify Terry and move on to the next candidate. <clears throat> All right, Terry, let's see who's going to join you next. You guys ready to move on to the next guy? Well, I, I'm not sure if somebody, I think we've been spending about five minutes. Carol, you're late. I'd like you to bring a note next time you come. And uh, here we go. Let's, let's get rid of old Terry here. And let's bring on Malcolm. Come on. That is a cute dog. I think he's slightly covered with snow. So let's, let's draw a square. There we go. It's gonna be, that's gonna be our new home. Pathetic, little pathos. So um, let's try him out. Uh, here we go. This guy, again, his name is Malcolm. I'm not sure if I've told you, but you're getting more and more serious about getting another dog, getting a dog, we're dogs. We do have um, Penny staying with us for just a few days. So we have some dog, dog satisfaction, but, and then we're also going to be joined by Marley again. You guys remember Marley? A lot of us drew him together. That was great. Marley the Corgi. He will he's going to be joining us for the weekend too. So we'll have a, a lot of dogs here over the weekend, which will be really good. We had Marley come over last night to to see how he and Penny get along, and that was pretty good. Penny is a high performance athlete. She can run. She can run incredibly fast, and. Uh, she, I mean, really, like, super fast, like, like astonishing, like a rabbit running out from under a bush. Speaking of which, I saw a rabbit this morning out the window. Um, whereas Marley is more of like a hassock. If you imagine, uh, like, a 45-pound ottoman covered with fur, that's really more what he is like. So if you imagine this rabbit running circles around a hassock. That's kind of what it was like, having the two of them here together. 
So we'll see. This will be an interesting weekend. It's two different. Say it's very nice drawing with this Pentel brush. It's it's got a, a fair amount of unpredictability to it because it is a brush, but um, it's so silky so, so smooth. I've forgotten what it's like to do to draw with it. It's uh, it's a little bit out of control, and you have to you have to, be, you have to proceed gingerly because you never know quite where it's going to go. This early. And also, when I first, the first few days of playing with this brush again, it was not exactly leaking, but huge amounts of, of ink were coming out of the brush. And that was messy to say the least. But it seems to have, have relaxed and gotten used to being here in Phoenix. Also, also well. it's, it's cooperating. So, earlier I, I mentioned that I wanted to talk a bit about organization because I had been feeling like Draw With Me was a little chaotic and unpredictable in a way that I think made it less, I, less good for all of us. It came to a head to me last weekend when I had, last week when we had Gigi here, and it was just Gigi Chen was visiting to talk about her workshop this weekend. And I don't know, I just felt like we spent a lot of time talking and not drawing. We, we, um, then when we got down to drawing, it was, I, I was complaining about my drawing. It just, I don't know, I walked away from it thinking like, I could do better. And one of the things that I think I wanted to do was to just be a bit more disciplined about the structure of Draw With Me and also just letting you, let, letting you be prepared a bit more. I think it isn't really right so that you show up and you have no idea what we're going to do or how we're going to do it. And then you probably spend the first bit of time just kind of scrambling around trying to get art supplies together and download things. And I think it could be better. I don't want you wasting time doing that, you know what I mean? I want you to enjoy yourself, relax, and just draw with me, as, the, as it says on the sign. So one of the things that I'm trying to do is to prepare in advance so that at least we know what we're going to be doing. And this PDF that you can download, that I mentioned here, in fact, I'm going to get rid of this thing if you haven't downloaded it by now, too bad. Um, that, that that PDF is something I'm going to make several days in advance in the future. And so you can, down, you can get it much, much in advance and really be ready. Really have it down, print it out if you want to. And just, just get your act together in advance so that you're not scrambling. I hope that that's something that you are okay with, even something that you like. If not, you can just ignore it and uh, plunge in with me. But um, that was my thought. And, and what I'd like to do actually next, and this will take a little bit more f um, fiddling, but I'm hoping the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be able to set it up so that you, I, that I can email these to you, you know, so that, so that it, like, certainly by Wednesday, you can have received an email with this in it, and you don't even have to go anywhere, you just, you can just download it right away. So I hope that that's useful, helpful. It just means that you, that, you know, you can all just have a better experience. Being organized is, I don't know, I can be fairly anal about certain things, and I am a Virgo. In fact, I'm apparently a triple Virgo, whatever that means. So I'm supposed to be pretty organized and, and impulsive about things. But a lot of times, I'm not that organized. And I think, uh,
I think that's supposedly one of the hallmarks of you know, being a great person is you issue structure and organization because you want to be free to do your own thing, man. But I don't know if that's really true. And there's certain kinds of creative people who are very, very organized, like graphic designers, for instance. They tend to be very organized. They tend to be able to create structure and calendars and all that kind of stuff. I'm always impressed by them. Um, but, you know, I think it's, it's a good thing, particularly when you're working with other people, to have some structure. And I don't think it necessarily has to be at the cost of creativity. So I'm going to really endeavor to do that more and more. It's just, it's just I feel like it'll be good for me spiritually too. Spiritually, it's a pompous thing to say, not spiritually, but um, you know, make me feel better. Hopefully, it will too. All right. So there we go. That's our dude. I think he's looking good, Malcolm. Label him and move on. So we've been doing this for half an hour now. We've managed to knock out three dogs. So I think we may not have time to do a huge amount because that's another thing I'm trying to do. I'm really trying to keep control of time so that you can immediately leave this experience and go on to whatever is next in your day, knowing that you've got some drawing in, but you also could book a dental appointment or go and watch a TV show, or call your mother right after it, knowing exactly when that's going to happen. So that is part of the plan, is to try and be more disciplined. Okay? If you have any issues with discipline that you want to discuss with me, you can email me, uh, and we can talk about it more. If you have some other ideas as to how to make Draw With Me better, maybe other things we could draw, other stuff we could draw with, um, let me know. Oh, you know what I wanted to remind you of? If you would like to share this, whatever you're making here with me or others, use this, draw with me, right here below. Is that it? Right here, right here below. This is a hashtag, you may have seen it before, draw with me. If you post a picture of, of your dog portraits on um, social media, and you put draw with me, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, I don't know, there's all kinds of thousands of platforms out there. If you put this draw with me, uh, then you will, you will um, be able to, I'll be able to find them. So do that. Uh, and if you put them in the schoolyard, the schedule school schoolyard, that'll be easy to find too, even easier. Okay, let's move on. Here we go. Who we have next? Carrot. Carrot, come on board. That's a good looking dog. I think it's a, a wire marauder, is it? Or a vishla? One of those kinds of dogs? Very handsome. And, uh, you know, he's not. Not quite in the same aspect. Oops, it is a square. You see that? Speaking of being organized, speaking of being methodical and neat, not that great. Okay, I still need this brush now. So let's see. I mean, this is a very nice looking dog, don't you think? straight line of his neck. That's noble. That's a noble beast. It's all angles. Kind of easy to draw with this brush back because it's just, it would appear to be a series of straight lines. We'll see if that really turns out to be true when I'm done. But yeah, that seems to be the case with it. Straight Nostril, nostril action. Do you remember a photographer named William Wegman? He was really a photographer, he was an artist. Um, 
did all these really great photos of his Weimaraners. Weimaran? Weimaran. His dogs. And, uh, you know, some of them were in like ridiculous positions. Like he would put them in a dress or he would somehow combine them with like a person's hands. So it would be like human hands on a dog. And I actually hired him to shoot an, an ad for me. This is probably in the early 90s. And he, he was a really great conceptual artist. I mean, if you, if you have any interest in him, check out his, the, I'm sure there are videos of his um, video pieces that he used to make uh, in the 70s even on YouTube. I imagine that they must be there. So yeah, so I shot, uh, hired him to shoot an ad for me, shoot a portrait of two dogs. And his studio was in the East Village, East Greenwich Village in New York. And he was not the kind of guy who shoots advertising. He'd ever done it before. I've done it subsequently a few times, but it was not. It was, he didn't have the sort of, I guess, quote unquote, professionalism of a regular advertising photographer. And one of the cool parts about it was in the East Village at the time. It was still pretty wild. The East Village in those days, and. We went over to his studio. It was on the ground floor of a largish building, not largish, but you know, four or five stories, biggish building. And he the studio was, was you know not, not a huge studio, not terribly professional. And it was really it wasn't a photo studio so much as it was an artist studio. And he said, what kind of dogs do you want in the ads? And I was like, really? Like we're, we're discussing this now during the shoot? I said, I don't really know, it's, it's fine. Um, whatever, you know, uh, I didn't want to shoot a wire monitor just because that was kind of a cliche of, of you know, his, not a cliche of his, but you know, I didn't want to just do what he did. I wanted to kind of stretch it a bit. So, so I said, well, you know, we could look at a few different dogs. And he said, yeah, no problem. So he opened the back door of the studio, which opened onto an alleyway, and he just whistled. And when he whistled, suddenly dogs started to appear, running down the alley. I don't know where they came from, just dogs in the neighborhood. And fat dogs, tall dogs, all different kinds of dogs were just kind of streaming in. And then he would say, you know, just identify any ones that you like. I would say, uh, yeah, I kind of like that orange one over there. And he would say, okay, great. And then he would just kind of grab it, give it a biscuit, and kind of make it hang around. And then I said, yeah, I sort of like that tall black one over there. And he grabbed him as well. And that's how we cast the dogs that we use in the ad, just these kind of random street dogs. I mean, I mean there aren't street dogs in New York anymore, Paul. Although there might be these days, who knows? God knows what New York is like. Probably there are packs of wild dogs wandering the streets at all hours these days, I imagine. But anyway, it was unusual. It was unusual, and time's gone by. But yeah, so we shot the ad with him. It was great. And uh, it was for a uh, camera company. What is the brand of your colored pencils? Lakshmi Karuna, you've shown up late. The color pencils that I'm using are called Ink Tense by Derwent. If you'd like to know more about them, feel free to rewatch this video because I talked about them quite a bit, quite a while ago.
All right. <clears throat> Fay Ray, that's right, Chris Fitzgerald points out that the dog's name is Fay Ray. Well, that was one of them. I think he had a bunch, but yeah. So, yeah, that was cool. Um, all right, so that is Carrot. So listen, um, so if you download this PDF that I mentioned, you will also be able to see Sally and Kevin. So those guys are all available on that PDF because I because I'm going to stop drawing now. I'm just going to go back to this. So I'm just going to, again. It, this is my new mode of trying to be super organized. Man Ray, correct? Man Ray. Um, and uh, I'm going to continue working on these. I, I want to do the, the other two. So hopefully you do too. And yes, so in my new guise of being super organized and punctilious and being, you know, um, structured, I'm going to pause now. I'm going to stop now, stop drawing, and uh, just uh, wrap things up. So, so if you want to email me and tell me any thoughts you have about making this better, great. I can go back and look at these comments too. Um, but the fact is that. I really enjoy Draw With Me, I hope you do too, and I want to keep doing it, and so I want to keep thinking of ways to make it better and better, and uh, to just have it be a pleasant, seamless experience. I think the idea of appointment drawing is really useful, for me it is, to be able to say, you know what, every Thursday at noon Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to draw for a half an hour, 45 minutes, at least that one day a week I'll do it. Hopefully I'll do it more than that, but having that I think is a good thing to do. And, um, you know, we, we're always drawing different things. It's not really a drawing lesson. That's never the idea. It's really just a drawing opportunity, an opportunity to get together, hang out, and make some stuff. So um, that is the thing that we did today was draw dogs. Yes, please post your finished, pup, finished pups, as Lisa says. It would be really nice. And maybe um, it would be great if I can... If you, a bunch of you post them, then I can gather them together and maybe next week I can share a whole big collection of them. We can see all the different Terry's and Brad's and Malcolm's and Carrots that we've all drawn um, and, uh, and see where they are. So again, just remember, slap that draw with me thing on your post and put it up there. Okay, cool. So, and also, if you, if you want to write to me and say, here's some other suggestions for things we could draw, that would be cool, too. Um, generally, you know, we don't want to draw too intensely, too long, too elaborately. Uh, and uh, it's, I mean, it's fine to draw from photos. That's kind of what we have to do, because we don't uh, necessarily have access to the whole world to draw right now. But um, I also like to draw other things, draw things from your life. So sometimes we'll draw self-portraits, sometimes we'll draw our hands, sometimes we'll our desks, sometimes we'll draw our favorite cup of tea, sometimes we'll draw what we did on vacation, sometimes I'm thinking that soon I want to do a drawing in the style of another great artist, so, you know, we could do a drawing in the style of Van Gogh or something like that, we'll see. All right, cool. Thanks so much, and um, I will see you again next time, next Thursday, here. Uh, by the way, subscribe to our channel. If you subscribe to our channel, you'll get a notification and a reminder when we start. So you know how to do that. Just go to the Sketchbook School channel and click on subscribe. Click on like, I guess. That's one of the obligatory things that you say when you do a YouTube uh, video. So like it, love it, do it. Lakshmi, I like your enthusiasm and I like your use of all caps. I too love drawing. So I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.